Wir sind hier auf der Edelmetallmesse in München und ich spreche mit Herrn Robert Baldock von Monument Mining. Bob, um, well, we start with Silinzing. You're producing mine, uh, where you just recently increased uh, the production capacity. Um, now you haven't didn't put out uh, a new guidance yet, but perhaps you can tell us if everything is uh, running smoothly now that you finished it and um, what you think it might get you in the future. Yes, that's right. We uh, finished the, the phase three upgrade. That gives us roughly a million ton a year production capacity through the mill. Uh, and we did that to be able to have lots of flexibility going forward. But we have not put out any guidance yet for the increased actual production ounces that we're targeting. And the, why we're not doing that yet is we're waiting for the 43101. Once that document is uh, released, We will then have a uh, life of mine, we will be able to cash flow that, and we'll be able to say with certainty, based on 43101 standards, that our annual production will then be whatever that will be. Yeah. And uh, when can we ex expect the document to come out, the new calculation? Uh, we believe that that'll come out uh, before the end of this calendar year, 2012. Um, well, so let's move on to Mangapur as Silenzing is running smoothly. Um, tell us, um, we're a bit confused about the plans for that because it's been, as far as I can remember, um, the plan was to produce iron ore pretty soon. Um, is that still on uh, in your latest or one of your news releases I read? Uh, you're thinking about producing copper instead which would make sense as the copper is getting much better prices at the moment. Um, what are your plans there? Uh, we did originally indicate that we would produce some iron ore. Uh, there's no doubt that we may still produce iron ore. But with the iron ore price going down and it looks like it won't recover to its previous uh, highs anytime soon, the world seems to be full of iron ore. The steel companies are reducing inventory There's a lot of ships full of iron ore laying around in harbors around the world, and we think it is better to go into copper. Copper seems to be fairly stable. Uh, the market prediction is that it will remain so for about a decade. So it makes sense to go into that uh, metal production. Uh, we will shortly put out some uh, guidance uh, on what, what our plans are. We have put uh, behind us the various uh, litigation aspects of Megapure after having acquired the 70% interest and we will be uh, in that guidance identifying what the program is. It'll have milestones, it'll have capital cost estimates, it'll have what our production objectives will be and when we produce cash flow from, from Megapure as step one. Uh, what our intent is, in terms of our planning, is to be able to emulate the same approach to Megapure as we did to Salencing. In other words, we raised an initial 28 million for Salencing. We built successive phases of the project with cash flow from the previous phase. We have not raised any more money from uh, shareholders uh, in that time. Uh, and uh, we, we think we can do a similar approach with Megapure. So the, the, the ambition to produce cash flow from copper, hopefully by around sometime 2014, uh, that cash will go towards development of the next phases of Megapure, which will be of course bigger cash flow, bigger production numbers and so on, subject always to the vagaries of the metal market prices. Thank you. Um, Now, uh, in the past, recent past, you did some confirmation drilling on Mangapur, uh, confirming historic uh, resources, up to a point, I guess. Um, now, um, in one of your last press releases, it also said that um, you will be granted, or you're, you're thinking you will be granted this year a new license uh, for Mangapur, for a Mangapur mine plan, if I have that correctly. Um, does that mean at the moment you're still waiting for that and, and you can't undertake exploration or drilling at the property? 
No, within the, uh, the guidance uh, news release that we're planning to put out uh, shortly, uh, it will address that point. Uh, but to put the market mind at rest, uh, we are free to go back onto Megapure now. We can drill and explore, and we can do engineering, we can do environmental work, and uh, all of the other sorts of uh, daily maintenance on the site that we could not do when we were injuncted. And so that's all behind us, and there is no uh, barrier at all for us going forward now. Thank you. So um, you said same at the Salinting, you're planning a staged approach from Angapur, development approach. Um, but still, it, it's going to cost uh, a lot of money, probably. Um, well, you recently raised uh, 23 million, 20 something, 0.4 million dollars in a private placement. Um, simply put, why to do that? Because, uh, well, you might need, uh, you, you, we think, you, or you said, I don't know if you publicly announced it, but uh, that you might need a lot more, like 100 million dollars. Um, so why do uh, the, the financing for the small portion of it now at a below market or at a, at a relatively low price? The reality of this business is that uh, the market uh, feels that we have plenty of cash. We have some cash, but what the market doesn't understand and analyze properly is that Selensing is still a growing project in terms of investment. We now are looking and we shortly will announce work on phase four, which is the next phase, which is to be able to build a, another plant expansion, which will enable us to treat sulfide material as the mine matures. Uh, that will cost us money. We'll announce how much exactly uh, when we can, which will be shortly. Uh, and then uh, we have to uh, acquire more land to expand the Selensing pit. We plan to spend up to $8 million on exploration on Selensing alone. So if you start to add these numbers up, uh, there's no uh, great surplus of cash within Selensing to be able to pair that money off and allocate it to Megapure. So that's why we've gone out and raised some money for Megapure. And we hope to be able to uh, move the share price with our positive information coming out and our market updates in the near future. And uh, on the back of that, we then may be able to raise some more money at better terms for, in terms of uh, dilution. So that's what we're definitely focused on. And uh, our objective, of course, at all times is to continually be increasing the earnings per share, increasing the net tangible asset backing per share, and uh, uh, the management believes that that is a better approach and less risky for shareholders rather than taking on debt in a troubled world where banks of the world, governments of the world can't control anything. Every day you wake up there's a new drama. There's a country going bankrupt, there are banks being persecuted and driven out of business, there are prosecutions for cheating, all this sort of thing scares the hell out of me in putting shareholders' in investment at risk. And we don't intend to do that. Thank you. So, uh, coming back to uh, your plans for Mangapur, say you're going to a production with uh, copper production in 2000, around 2014 as planned, and then grow the business. Uh, would that be then the stage at which you might uh, think about paying a dividend? Well, it's a little early. That's definitely an objective. It's a little early for us to be able to say when we might pay a dividend, but it's definitely on the agenda. We, uh, we plan to become a mid-tier mixed metals producer that is paying a sustainable dividend. Now, that means that we had to acquire a project that was big enough to be able to demonstrate to the market that we're going to be around for a couple of decades at least. And that's our approach. And um, one, one final, final question just uh, popped into my head right now is um, one of the big advantages of production at Selinding is that you uh, are exempt from taxes for another four, almost five years? No, another three years. Another, another three years. Another three years. So uh, 
do you have the same advantage at Mangapur? Uh, we are going to apply, but of course that's up to the government to grant that. But we are given indication that they will look favourably at that. And that's likely to be for something like a 10 year tax break instead of five. Because this is a large project, it will employ many, many people, four times what Salencing employs. Uh, the, the products will stay uh, mainly within the country. Uh, it will, we will create value add products downstream. And uh, that's what the government is looking for. More economic and commercial activity retained within the economy. Uh, it creates further investment. It creates further employment and everything stays at home, as it were. So we're in lockstep with the government in trying to achieve those sorts of uh, objectives, business objectives, from, sell from uh, the projects in, in uh, Malaysia, particularly Megapure. Thank you.